Welcome to the very latest edition of the Premier View Tipperary GAA podcast. Don't forget to give us a follow if you haven't done so already on Twitter. We are at Premier View Pod. On Facebook, our page is the Premier View Podcast and on Instagram, where we are Premier View Podcast. We have up to the minute news on all things tip GAA across all our socials, plus the odd giveaway so don't miss out. If you're a Spotify listener, don't forget to hit follow and also hit the bell so that you never miss a podcast episode. We are now delighted to introduce our new sponsor, Orga Retro. Go retro with orgaretro.com, specialists in county retro style clothing. Hello and welcome to the Premier View podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ryan, and today I'm jo- joined by t- current Tipperary minor football manager, John McNamara. John, to kick things off there now, you'd be a very well-known name in Tipperary football circles, of course, the McNamara name down in, down, down south, down in Clonwell. Um, taking on second year now in the Tipperary minor football job coming after a very good year last year. Um, just maybe, a, just for the listeners who wouldn't be too familiar uh, which are just a bit about your background or you know how you came to be Tipperary football manager as well there. Thanks Kevin uh, appreciate you having me on tonight um, my own name might might be it might be very familiar to people in, in Tipperary football in circles but it more so because of my father because it was my father's name as well John Senior um, who went through many rank, uh, many of the ranks in terms of tip football I think he was the first Tipperary football sec- county board secretary um, he he selector on many many minor senior teams played played um, minor and senior football himself. Um, obviously had a, a very successful career as a, both a player and a manager in Clamwell Commercials uh, Senior Football Club. And then obviously the the second most famous McNamara in the county would be my brother Joe. I'm always I'm always introduced you're as y- your your <laughs> Joe's brother. <laughs> so. Joe obviously was a fantastic footballer for, for the club with five senior county medals and also represented tip at various levels. So I was kind of a little, I'm, a, I'm an unknown, no, unknown factor to a lot of people, I'd say. Maybe last year my profile probably in, in improved a little bit. I didn't have much of a stellar footballing career, even though I played for, we would have played together. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> so, and that, that's not, a, that's not, I don't know if that's an indictment on me or you. Yeah. <laughs> We've both got the best out of ourselves. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, no, I look, I, I suppose I stopped playing. I stopped playing I, before I was told to stop playing. I stopped playing in about 2009. I kind of had enough with injuries and stuff. Um, and I also seen that there was, at the time in the club, there was a huge influx of younger, new younger players are on the way. You could see them coming. The likes of Seamus and Aldo and Michael and all these guys are on the way. So it's kind of like, you better just step out of the way and leave them at it. Um, the f- minute I stopped playing, I actually it was Tommy Morrissey who I had announced at the, the time. I, he was inside. I was in the field with him, and he said, "I just said to him, look, I'm st- I'm finishing up now. I'm not. I've had enough now of this." And he just immediately said to me, he "said You're going to have to go straight into coaching." So I said, "You're coming in with me," and it was. He, we went straight into an under twenty one t- uh, t- setup. Uh, Tommy, there was Tommy and Philly Ryan, uh, myself and Brian Tyrrell. Um, and that was, it was, a, it was the Donald Lynch, Aldo Matassa, Alan Lundrigan uh, era of players. Um, and luckily enough, uh, we probably punched above our weight at the time in winning. We, we bet my Rovers in, I think it was the South semi-final, which was the real coup for us, because they were the, they were the kingpins of the age group at the time and went on to win the county title against Arville Rovers. The, I suppose the, the key factor in that group was in the... I think it was the South semi-final. We introduced a young fella who was playing cornerback for the for the high school at the time, at the age of seventeen. We introduced him at at cornerback on the club, and then very quickly noticed in the South final that this kid could play anywhere. Um, and then he transitioned. Now there's always going to be an argument who who made the decision, and I know if it was ever the right decision, but he transitioned into the full forward line. That was Michael Quinlivan. And it was kind of, it was, that was, we could, you could see that. And at the same, same year, Blossom had the minors as well. And he, I remember him sp- speaking about the idea that this is potentially the start of something for the club. And it was, as you, you know what I mean? It was not only the club there, club, but also, but also, yeah. but also yeah. the county, you know what I mean? And, and I, to be fair, I think 
Davy Power, we played Davy Power's minor team in the challenge match in around the same time, I remember the year after, and you could see Davy was eyeballing exactly where the, where these players were coming from, and he was going to grasp and get try and get the best out of them. Um, which he did, which was, and like that was kind of the driving factor for a lot of what you're seeing, obviously the success that we've seen over the last couple of years at under 21 level uh, and into the senior ranks then from, from two years ago. Um, so I suppose from there, I, and obviously with the kids being born, you're, you're naturally transitioning into kind of coaching at a young level. So I, I kind of moved up through the ranks from under five all the way up into minor. And I was involved, luckily enough to be involved with Charlie in 2015 when we went on to win the Munster Club title. Uh, so that would, to me, that's like, I, I wouldn't ever consider to my, consider like contributed an enormous amount, but you learn so much. When you are seeing like when Charlie stepped, Charlie McGeever stepped into the club, he brought a level of professionalism, obviously from his soccer background into the club in terms of how things were done, in terms of how you addressed various matters, the logistics and running the club. Um, so we all learned a huge amount from him and it kind of drove us in terms of our own outlook, in terms of what we needed to do and how we needed to improve ourselves. Um, so. From that then, pushing into the kind of inter-county, initially starts obviously with a lot, a lot of coaches with, at, at divisional level. So from under 13, under 14, 15, South Divisional teams, um, again, working with, like, there was a, luckily enough to be involved with people like Charlie, John Owens, Milo Rovers, Tommy Murphy, Clamelo, Tommy Sheen, a Feathered. I mean, guys, guys that have seen a lot of, lot of football down through the years. So you can, mm-hmm. you're picking up, you're picking up so much from them and their personalities and how they deal with kids and, and how they approach the kind of game themselves. Um, I was asked to get on board the last year's minor team when they were under 15. I was asked by, uh, by Tom Fitzgerald, who was GDA at the time, still a GDA, I should say. Uh, he asked me would I, would I get involved with the, with the county to set up the um the academy and at the time it was who was in charge was George Hannigan of Shannon Rovers and Mike Donnell who stayed on with me. Um again George was for me George was a, was an amazing addition for those young men to have as a as a driving force. He's a very quiet guy but he's deliberate in what he says and he's he's he knows exactly what he's talking about when it comes to, to the training aspects to the, to the games layout and set up and stuff like that now if you were to ask me in 2021 who was going to be the minor it's summer 21 who's going to be the minor manager of 2022 i would have straight away told you it was going to be george hannigan um all we were all uh, kind of set for that to ha- for that to happen um for unfortunately, unfortunately, I suppose you could say George's wife was, ended up expecting another. They expected another child then in in very early twenty two, and I think he had kind of made the decision at that point, late into twenty twenty one, that probably it wasn't the right time for him. To, he wouldn't have the time to do it. So basically, it was it was nearly the last last last, last call, late call in October for when just I, I just I kind of said spoke to Mike Donlan who was in with the academy with myself and myself were in with George. And I just kind of said to Mike, I said, look, I, I'm going to put my name forward because I, I, we don't want to, we want to continue with this group of lads. Like, we were enjoying so much with the, the process that we, we, we had been involved in the academy. So Mike said, yeah, go ahead. If you do, I'll jump on board with you. Um, and as fate happens, I, I was probably, there was two candidates, myself and there was a chap from Cork who, who had worked with academies in Cork who were in front of Conor Dwyer for, um, for the interview. Um, they liked kind of what I always spoke about. I probably, uh, they may have, they, they probably may have had some idea because of my background, just in club wise, that it might have been adv- advantageous for them. Um, again, the, the, the concern they might've had is, uh, will I focus in or will I know uh, coming from the South tip, of course, would I be, would I invest my time as much into the other divisions, which that was the main thing for me. I did speak about the fact that it's, if nothing else, we have to try and drive, football in the other divisions I think to make to kind of see the benefit How of How do you go about that John as I said you know you're brought up with football around you so, so tip yeah. the hotbed of, of tip football we'll co- come back to you again last year and, and stuff like that, but it's an interesting question so you're going up to maybe like a non-traditional yeah. football area and Conor O'Dwyer himself would be beating this drum as well Correct you know, What's your strategy do you just identify t- some I- key young lads that you think if you get them in you can you can, I think you, can, you have to you know, I think you have to potentially go dig, dig, dig deep a little further. Uh, 
the one thing I would stress, like obviously Tipperary being the Hurling County, and like like the argument, I suppose the historical argument is that you go the further north and Tipperary you go, the more hurling they are oriented they are now. I easily argue to toss that there's as many hurlers down south as there are up north. But you know I mean that's a different argument altogether. And we can we can see that in, in terms of the what the layout of the land. Yeah, when you flip of, it, John, there as well, you know, you might be saying there's a bit of gold dust for you up north. Uh, yeah, oh absolutely. But I think it's I think you sh- you have to try and influence the clubs in terms of the benefit that they can see if they do take on football as a as an, a, an ingredient within their club itself, that they'll see that the the the, the, the players themselves would kind of learn a little bit more about the physicality of the game um, just in terms of presence like there's so much so much you can transition between the two sports hurling and football you know what I mean there's obviously there's skill based there's a, probably a little bit more a lot more skill based uh, uh, activities within the hurling uh, fraternity but there's so much more in terms of in terms of how your position and sense if you when you look at it Kevin we've, we saw with Kilkenny was it Brennan with Kilkenny and now we're seeing it with Limerick but the, the, the strategists and kind of tacticians are stepping into the hurling world at inter-county level who have a football background. Mm. So it's, there's, there's so much, there is benefit to be, to be trying to incorporate. And it's not, and like, I know Connor himself, he's like, he'd love to see the concept of other clubs, the not, the, not the usual suspects in a county football, in a club football scene. He wants to see other clubs. Like you see the emergence of Ballina. Now that's, a, I think that's a special case because of the influx of, potential as you could call them outside people outside from the, area. that have come into that area in Tipperary there's a lot of kind of different Limerick Kerry kind of meet but I think there's a few different people from from Dublin area and stuff so there's there's probably people who have had football at the at their kind of core come in but he would certainly love to see the inf- of other clubs kind of take up the mantle of football and maybe just kind of and start playing it a little bit more but I definitely think there's benefit now how do you how do you do that I think it's I think it's a yeah, it's a kind of a PR campaign um I was recently up with um, Ross Gray GA Club about about two or three, four Saturdays ago. Um, they had obviously in Ann Rovers, who were the football club in in Ross Gray, um, had ceased to be. So, and the disappointing thing for me was that that I, I felt was that there were like in Ann Rovers recently in, at juvenile level were were, were strong. Now they mightn't be in a county, but they're they're they were getting to county finals and things like that. So I tell I and Ross Gray would have a significant um football and background as well. So I, I went up there just I just said to Connor, I said, look, they they were look reaching out. They want they decided to make it a, a they, they've made a policy within the club that they're going to bring football into the Ross Gray. Obviously, it was Ross Gray Hurling Club, and now it's just gonna be Ross Gray GA. Um, because they see the benefits, they obviously see that there's 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 a, a desire within the playing population. And there's also, they also see the fact that the ladies football is something that needs to be, that, that's something that's a, very beneficial for any club to, to kind of push as well. Um, so I just went up there on a Saturday morning and had a two hour session, just coaching session. And all I really talked about was basically just how I'd approach um, training of kind of juvenile football, different things, different tips and, tips on what they need to do and just kind of simplifying it but what i did encourage them when I'm, and i always say this because and this is something i picked up from i think from charlie mcgiever you can incorporate so many of your own you can incorporate drills from different sports within within like football to hurling to soccer to football to soccer to hurling there's so many so many kind of little drills and stuff that you can pick up and just incorporate for whatever you want to do and then just and and obviously suit make it suit to suit what you needs what your needs are um and that's why i was just trying to give them the the kind of i was trying to give them the understanding that everything is in their power if they want to keep driving that process up in ross gray and like i i, I wish them success with us you know and like, like yeah, kevin as you know well any any sport any sporting team it's it's a it's a big and big investment in time and effort to try and uh, get lads on the pitch uh to play, compete in any kind of sport so like you know I mean they're already like obviously you'd hope that the that they can bring in as many um parents and stuff into the fold um to that's try it, and I drive suppose. it. And that's that's and key. Minor, you're you're relying on parents' goodwill as well, you know, to kind of get on board with you know, you're carrying a panel of thirty six. I think that's a lot of lifts and you know yeah and all that kind of stuff. And look, well, I'd say ninety nine percent of parents will be very supportive and delighted. You know, yeah, and, and like to be fair, to be fair, like if 
and obviously at, at minor level, when you get to minor 20, obviously minor level anyway, we, we, we avail of the buses that are put on and stuff like this. But right. like we, our process started in September where we brought in, I'd say we nearly brought in 100 lads just to kind of start the trial process off. Um, and from that, like obviously from that, we broke it down. I think we ended up with about 80 lads and that's going from maybe about October n- nearly to the middle of January. Um, we started slowly uh, reducing the squad. And, but one of the, like, obviously that's a, it was a huge um, effort from both parents and, and players to attend sessions. And, and the one thing we did do, and thankfully, like, thankfully the, one, the one advantage I always say that I have as, as a football manager in, at inter-county level is the Friends of Tiberi Football. They do, they, Friends of Tiberi Football go about their year fundraising constantly because the and every single cent that they raise gets pushed towards what we're trying to do but also beyond those as well into academy and stuff so i we were able to localize a lot of the gym sessions so i mean they, they had to be paid for but that we kind of made the under, parents understand like look we're we're here to try and help the children in, within this process help the players in, in this process and, and maybe take the weight the load off a little bit um now as I said, we carried about 80 players. Uh, for me, for me, that was important because obviously you're going to you're going to reduce it down to a certain squad size, but you want to try and give as many players as possible um, an opportunity to see what potentially the type of player that they're they're up against at their own age group is. So maybe they can improve that way. Give them an understanding of initial stage gym sessions in terms of S and C and things like that. You know I mean? and I and what certainly was the eye opener for me was the the strength and condition is a huge eye opener for me. Like we didn't have that when we were growing up, Kevin. Um, it's really it's really kind of it's and we're kind of it's so vital that more and more players like the players who are going up to the academy are are now being have were going through the Satanta system up in Torles. and obviously the minor and stuff. So it's and that's John. It, I know that's one of the things I want to ask. You know, come back to your points yeah. of how you're going about, but I think. You know, with the lads that have just been through, you know, had a good year introduction at under 17 level. Is the gap to under 20 now too much in that? You see, would you be confident that those lads are going to be kept in the tip football academy slash kind of development squad? Because there's a lot of difference between maybe an 18 year old and a 20 year old, which is the next yep. inter county grade, and then a bigger difference again to senior. Senior. So, can you think that pipeline is working for or? Well, I, 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 the, the, all I can go by, by is with the feedback I've, been, I've received from Knife Fitzgerald and the boys at under 20 level. And the, the last year's minors, let's call them, 2022 minors, who have stepped into the process. Now, not all of them did. Some, some are, obviously, education takes over as well at this, at this age. But the, those that have stepped in have very much impressed. And the one thing I might say is that, and again, yeah, it's it's not necessarily they might be the strongest players in the team or the best footballer in the team, but I think the one advantage they might have had over kind of players in the last couple of years is the positive the positive tone in how last year how they, when they came out how they came out of last year. Um, we were very lucky. I, I, like I, I'll stress, I've, I stressed before, we were very lucky in terms of we got the round robin system. Uh, in the minor championship last and year, and we have just to kind we of have again the, this year, the, which I think is important. It's the four counties of Clare, Tip, Waterford, and Limerick. The four, four is correct. Minor we football. Call, 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 yeah, call them the weaker counties. I have no yeah. problem saying that. Um, it's not the big two, Cork and Kerry. Um, my own, pre- now my own. It's games, preference. John, isn't it? It's absolutely it's games. Football. Like yeah. we, we, we've, th- we had a minimum of three games against Limerick, Limerick, uh, Waterford, and Clare. We had around Daryl Darcy final. Um, against Limerick. Now, straight away after the final, we were lucky enough to win that. Straight away final, I, I made a statement. I said both teams needed to go through to the county or to the Munster semi-final. And thankfully, somebody might have been listening because that's what's going to happen this year for those who are lucky to get to that final. And then obviously then we had Cork in the Munster semi-final. Um, so that's five championship games, which is yeah. absolute gold dust for players. They understand, like they, so all that learning that they got Bar the process that they went through with our with ourselves in terms of the training, in terms of S and C, in terms of nutrition, in terms of how to deal with injury injuries and injury prevention, they have without without putting any pressure on players, they will naturally put pressure on themselves because they're competitive. You know what I mean? 
every like players are compared to them. so they'll have understood the pressurized environment of of a championship game the pre the the, the week before it, the the enjoyment of actually winning a championship game and then ultimately losing a monster semi final um, and what that felt like as well and and understanding and the knowledge comes from that of I need to improve we need to do this we need to do, we we probably potentially need to do more something different or really, as a player i might need to work on different things and like it you you can, that's to me that's for all we do from those five championship games brought those players on immensely like the, um so like the likes of when the likes of then charlie king step into the under 20 level they come in with a real understanding of what a champ what intercounty championship football is about now when it comes to as they mature, they'll they'll start to understand the intensity level goes up, the work rate has to go up again, the physicality goes up, but it, they'll get that as they mature and they'll understand that. But I think the initial stage, the initial point, and for me, that was what it was. It wasn't actually about winning anything. Um, like we wanted to win our first our first championship game, and we were hoping to, that we could get to the monster semi final, which we have, we've managed now. The monster semi final itself, we let ourselves down in the first 20 minutes. We were naive. And, and I f- have happily admit that we were naive. I think we played, we had played in a kind of an open, expansive type of a game again. So when we did come up against Cork, and to be fair, Cork had such a poor game against Kerry that it was, they were probably a bag of nerves. So they had to right a few wrongs when they met us. And they certainly did. Now, again, if I want to make an excuse, we made mistakes on that night that probably were down to our own nerves. And again, that's learning. You get that at minor, like, and yeah, that's learning. So that, that, yeah. any of the guys who went into that would come out of that then with a better understanding. But um, as I said, so this you know, year, yeah, sorry, this go year, on. exactly. Which was going to going to say, ask her this year, John. I suppose it's a what I call. We talked about the thirty six band panel, that half of which are from the south, which is you know, it's, yeah. I suppose one thing on that great to see so many feathered faces, kind of maybe a club that was. You know, kind of gone through a bad few years, but I suppose for the for the health of Tipperary football, it's great to see that their more feathered names are definitely coming back on the the underage teams as well. Five from the north and five from the mid. Or if yep. I have that right, is or no? It no, five, eight, 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 from, yep. eight from eight from the mid, five from eight the from north, the mid, five from then, five, five from, from west, west as, yeah. as well. So it's a you know you've certainly kind of got the mileage in in, in looking at uh, plenty of players and, and bringing them down. So and, yeah, and that and that's the thing and. Um, Look, we, we ended up with bringing six of the, the of the of the group. There's six younger lads. Um, no, and to be to be honest with you, we could have it could have been easily another four, five, six, seven younger lads could easily could have made the grade. They were just unlucky. To be what we, but I was really happy about this this for this season. When I said we got to about eighty lads, the standard of football was very very good. Everybody who was there. Was was deserving of being involved in the process, and obviously then we filtered it down. And look, uh, tough decisions were had to be made, and there are lads who didn't make it that could feel themselves very, very un, un, misfortunate. Uh, but look, that's the way it is. You know, I mean, that's that's unfortunate. That's competitive sport. Like you're you're trying to you're competing against what is the best in the county of, at your age group. Uh, as you said about feathered. Um, I suppose the advantage I might have had with this particular age group is that I have coached at this age group up for the last couple of years. So I would have had close, got a close, good close look at a lot of the South players, if nothing else. And look, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't surprised. Even if it wasn't me that was, was, was in charge, I wouldn't be surprised to see the, the quantity of federal lads on there. Um, they're, they're, the work that's been done at for let's say the boys born 2006, 2007, it's a huge amount of work being done uh, in Feather with those kids. Um, and as you said, for like Feather, the, the most senior county titles, and now and they've gone through a barren patch. And for now, for now, John. For, for now. now, and like and as, as somebody says, like you, you can't, you, you need opposition to have a competition. You know what I mean? We need Feather to come back up into the senior grade and and be strong. You know what I mean? We need the likes of Balnat to start tackling the senior grade and be strong. Um, as I, as I said, somebody, if if the lads in Torlis ever decide they want to play senior football, we could all be in trouble because the talent up there is unreal. It's unbelievable. Like we have two two of the Torlis lads, uh, Tom Broderick and Ronald O'Brien, on the squad this year, which I'm I'm delighted with. You know what I mean? Because I think that Torlis needs to be represented. I know. As I think well. I'd agree with a lot of what you say. The cross fertilization between sports, because when they do pick it up occasionally, when you see it, there yeah. is a a naturalness there, and there's a competitiveness competitiveness there as well. 
But like the thing, the, the way I and the way I look upon it is that like if you are if you're a hurling club, there's only so many lads can make a senior hurling team. You know, it is that's only then like so. There's, there's, and if you if you're if you're like if you're a fairly large club and you're pushing young lads through, and they, they might make a senior hurling team, but they they could have intermediate hurling, they could have intermediate football or junior football or even senior football to to fall back on as well, and to find themselves and to mature into 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 what they need to do. So look, I, that's and that's as you said, cross fertilization works. And before I suppose we leave the 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 minor aspect, what would be without putting you on the spot too much now? What do you think would constitute a good year for tip minors? Um, I say, I think I, I, I'd say progression maybe into a semi final. Yeah, uh, would be solid kind of progress. I my, my trite comment to somebody before was it, within Tipperary footballing circles, mm-hmm. we're expected to beat Limerick, we're expected to beat Clare, and we're expected to beat Watford. We can beat Cork on a good day, and we'll never beat Kerry. And that's uh, that's me being very trite about it. Um, and it's but I think there's a set there's a kind of little bit of truth in that for me it's not that we for me that it's not about replicating last year for me a successful year this year would would not only would would be get to a monster semi-final but to approach it in a better fashion to try and work on our to try and work on on the issues that we encountered last year without any solution and put solutions in place for that you know what i mean um i we are we we um myself and tommy mars had a chat about that that if we did the same thing if we it, did the same thing as last year we would have failed we'd fail we would have failed ourselves we would have failed the the, the lad the players involved in the process so look we're, we're 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 slowly we're trying to approach that like we're we're trying to be a little bit a little bit more scientific in terms of what we want to do in terms of how we set up the play and maybe have a few, one or two different more formations and potentially look at maybe a slightly more defensive formation if required things like that and rather and and try and remove the like the naivety out of our own and when i say naivety i mean for us coaches um ourselves and try and approach it so yeah, look, m- my hope is that I'd love to retain the Darrell Darcy final or trophy. Um, it was so important last year because the group of players that we had last year all came from the hands of George Hannigan, who was a close friend of Darrell Darcy um, up in Shannon Rovers. So it w- and Charlie King being the captain from North Tip, it's just important. It was, it was a, a, it, we had a lovely... Um, evening inside in the horse and jockey when we presented the medals and Daryl's parents were both there to present the trophy and present the medals. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very important. You see the history of some of these things and that there, there's, it's very vital for, for players. Um, so would love to, would love to retain the Daryl Darcy fi- uh, trophy if possible and then set ourselves up for a potential crack at one of the big two. And may and look, not looking for moral victories, but I definitely think we need to show the players that we can potentially align ourselves in a, in a fashion that can possibly get us pushes into the next stage. And I suppose this, the the key date there is April thirteenth. Just so hopefully, in, yeah, uh, for, for the throwing. All those games are all your round robin games. That, are they in Simple John or no? And uh, no, the first game April thirteenth against Limerick is in Rackheel. It's the way we had Limerick. Um, the next two, Clare and Watford, are they're both set for Semple Stadium now. Um, the, I obviously comes down to availability of, of the stadium. Um, so they, look, if they're if they're not in the stadium, we'll have to look at a different venue. Bring it down um, to Clonmel, John. Bring it down to Clonmel. Uh, uh, we'll have to welcome the <laughs> side. <laughs> for it's, Waterford, it, anyway. It, it'll well, be actually, near, it'll, it'll bring it to Nina. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, bring it. How far can we go? Up to Noxion, Noxion, Noxion maybe. Yeah. Um, um, it, it, it's thirty years actually since I was I played County Minor myself. Um. For, under the tutelage of Colin O'Flaherty from Kay and Johnny Cummins, Art Finnan and Hugh Kennedy a tip. Um, and I remember playing, we played Limerick and Waterford both in Clan Mill back in 93. So it's, it's, it's nice for me. It's, it's a nice kind of just a little memory. Why, but one of the really great things I really enjoyed last year was the support we got at all the games um, from, from lads, from football and people in the county. And Colin, I'm, we played the Darryl Darcy final in Mallow and I remember standing on the sideline in the second half, and I just turned around and I could hear a voice in the back in my back of, back of my ear, and it was Colin O'Flaherty. 
senior. And I just, I was just, it made, it really kind of gave me a little lift to feel that like he was there, like he, he was, he was at the, the, the strange thing about it back, I think Colin was a minor in 67 or 68. And he, he, he proclaims that it was my own father, John Senior, that put him on a minor team. So he, he responded then by putting me on a minor team in 93. And there he was behind up on my shoulder then for last as my as when I was the minor manager. So it's a lovely little it's kind of like traditional kind of thing that we're there to support each other. And he got a great kick out of it. You know what I mean? Just seeing seeing tip miners do well. And I think a lot of people did because it's it's a nice little you, the thing about my father used to always talk about especially, especially club minor teams that if you've got a successful club minor team, it's a it's a glimpse into the future of what your seniors will be. And I think that's what people are hoping for in the la- in in this year, last year and maybe this year and as we go forward. And I think John, maybe to to follow up on that now, I suppose you alluded to earlier on that very successful Tip Minor winning team in 2011. And yeah. it wasn't a club team. It certainly provided the backbone of some great days in t- for Tipperary football. Correct. Yep. Notably, a run to the All Ireland semi final in 2016, and of course, the COVID monster final 2020 yep. when. You know, on, after I'm not even going to guess seventy whatever years uh, since the last mon- monster win was 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 put to bed and down in Park Parky Cueve. Um Now I suppose the the landscape isn't as rosy. Players move on. We've had a lot of um, turnover in players. One of the reasons we've kind of yo yoed a, a little bit in between the down to the Division Four first league got out last year and. I suppose we haven't started this league campaign with three defeats well at all. And I suppose we're facing a must-win game against Longford. And I know you're, I suppose, being involved in the tip minor setup, you you might not be able to say too much, but like I suppose your thoughts on where tip football is going at the moment, or or is there any like one thing maybe you know you identify? Well, I suppose that the, the, the one thing you definitely can identify, I suppose, for anybody who's kind of looking on in with a passing interest in what, what's happening in tip football. Um, I think there was a statement made that from the 2020 Munster final winning team panel, there was nine left from the entire panel. Like so, uh, any county that any county that that has has now lost Michael Quinlivan and Alan Campbell and Connor Ear and uh, like Connors, and now and then you follow that with uh, Bill Maher, and then you obviously then you follow that up with Connor Sweeney's injury, unfortunate injury, and Stephen O'Brien's injury. Um, it's that's in itself is a very difficult position for Davy Power to be in. Now, the one thing I will say is that I saw it last year, and I'm seeing it again this year. That he's Davy's put. I think he's he's. I think he's gra- he's grasping the nettle on the base that he's he's trying to incorporate more and more new players into the squad. You can see that with the lads, some of the lads from Mullahan coming in, getting their, getting their caps last year, and a few other lads then bringing in. But uh, the, and the, the the thing about that is that it's as we talked about before the 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 learning curve for for minor, but the lowest learning curve for any any lad playing senior football. You, you, it's it takes a it takes a while to, to really grasp exactly what the intensity of the game, the pace of the game, um, different things like that, like you're, like the different systems you might be playing against. So I, I, I definitely, for me, I, I know it, it doesn't, it, it's not looking rosy for them at the moment. I think they're, I think they're, they've, they're trying to embed uh, kind of a new, new set of players into, into the squad themselves. And that does take time. Um, if they drop into Division Four, which potentially they might do this year, they'll approach, they'll they'll address that in the same way that if they remained in Division Three or if they went were promoted to Division Two, they'll address the new season in terms of what they want to set out their goals to be. Um, the I seen John, um, I seen just to kind of take it down a, a, a diff- I seen a, an article at the Irish Examiner today. I don't know if you've seen it. It was, it was basically almost like an expose of you know where to next for Waterford football. Yeah, who haven't won a game in two two years, kind of things, and all the different strategies that they could employ now, ranging from getting Derek McGrath involved with the footballers to you know yeah. getting sending an SOS to Crow Park, like and by no means saying temporary football is there, you know, is is there or will, will ever go there? But like you know. What would be the one thing we spoke earlier on about you kind of going up to various clubs? Like, if you could do one thing for temporary football, or say one thing you know to be done, what would that be? Like that you think might improve results in the long term? 
or the senior footballers themselves. Yeah, because like I'm looking maybe since that post 2015 minor mm-hmm. final win, there hasn't been a whole height of success minor. Maybe. Yeah, well, I, uh, yeah, no, well, I, I just well, it's certainly at minor level. Look, it just it, don't want to speak. Uh, I can't really speak too much about this, the processes that were involved in, 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 for those players. But you have to encourage, certainly, um, you have to, from academy upwards, you have to encourage the players to understand that this is a journey that they're about to take place. For that. And the, you, like at minor level, it's nice to make a minor football team. But if you don't make a minor football team, it's the starting point of your adult football. But a club, school, college, and, and hopefully lads that can go into, into county. So you're trying to breed a confidence into players and a belief system into players. That's what we're trying to do, and certainly at minor level, that they, they have the tools available to, for them to improve and to really tackle and to really believe that they can, that they can make an uh, impact at senior level. For the current senior team, I think it's a matter of trying to, it's layer, nearly lay, closing, closing, rounding the, the wagons nearly as such. And if they can, like, before they're, they're about, they're obviously, whenever, late April, May, they're going to begin their championship. They, if they need to put a bit of steel into their entire group, they need to, like, I mean, they really need to kind of get a bit bitter, bit of bitterness into, into, into their thought pattern, kind of say, look, we need to fight for something here. We need to prove, start to prove ourselves to, to not prove, prove it to ourselves that we're capable of playing uh, inter county senior football. I think, you know, I think two of the next games are, as well as that, like these little things you hang on to. I think that Paddy Christie is over long for listening. So that's a, maybe an added Correct. motivation because whoever Correct, loses yeah. that game on Saturday is. Yeah, it's gone. Is, don't know is gone yeah. Is, but, but, that's, you know, uh, but, but that's what it is. And it comes down to the idea that you start addressing you, you are only as good as your last game. You start your own, your only focus is your next game. Your only focus is your next training session. Can we, what can we improve? Um, like right now, if, right now I, I'd grab those players and I'd sit them all down and I'd, I'd and definitely reassess what, what our goals are for the rest of the season to really, and be truthful about it and be honest about it. What, what, what is the expectation in terms of what we want from think- this particular season? Do you think that there's enough time to do that mid-season now with everything a bit more condensed? Yeah. As in, we see in the National Football League now, like it's the, I think the Football League is working a lot better in the Hurling League because, you know, there is that kind of ladder of pro- progression there. Correct, yeah, there is. Yeah. I think there is that room for that bit of honesty there after losing three oh, games. There's room for, absolutely, absolutely. And like, and to be fair, I'm, 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 I'm talking on the basis that I would know a good number of the players, obviously. And I they, that's they, that would be their mentality. You know what I mean? That they would, that they would, they are honest about their own, uh, about themselves and how they approach everything, and they would hold their hands up and say, "Yeah, maybe I just haven't done enough, or maybe I I need to improve on different aspects of my game, improve on my training routines, improve my whatever daily aspects." But I, I definitely for me, it, it would be it, it would be worthwhile. It's always worthwhile to talk. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, how do you know how to improve? You know. Like, and, and in the end, it is the players that have to stand up and take responsibility for what they do on the field. For all, for all what Davey and Charlie and the boys do, and, and obviously the likes of, the, you have the likes of Tommy Toomey and Anthony Shelley in the background and the background staff, brilliant, brilliant people. Good football. Yeah, brilliant, 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 honest football people. And for all, they, for, what, for all that they can do, it's still the players that cross the white line, as you know well. Mm-hmm. It's a cliche, but it's actually true. And for them, I think they need as a group to kind of sit down. Now, it, as I said already, that they've had they've had the the wrong end of the stick over the last kind of couple of weeks. It's, and like, I don't care what anybody says. If if you're if you're on that panel and you're seeing Connor Sweeney being ca- like walk, like coming off the pitch on the base and like knowing that it, with a, such a serious injury, it's psychologically it's an impact. It really is, like you know what I mean. Because um, first of all, on a personal level, you don't want to see anybody with that kind of injury. And for somebody, some, especially somebody like Connor, who's a real leader, and he was a leader in the group, like. But as well, I think you know, in modern day football, like the difference between a lot of teams is that key marquee forward. If you yeah. look at like, yes. Monaghan, Connor yeah. McManus yeah. for years not carrying him, but like you know, yeah. I think the, the difference maker on Connor. Paddy Sweet, yeah, yeah, exactly. And like you know, if you go back to twenty twenty again, that sideline against Limerick, yeah, which, you know, setting setting. <laughs> Set in like motion a lot of yeah, exactly. Oh, it's, it's, it, 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 lifted, it. it lifted the whole the whole team. Like it, you could argue the thought, you could easily argue, and and if Limerick football probably would argue 
that they like they probably felt they missed out on a potential month final because they potentially were the better team in that semi final. Absolutely, but the bit of the magic at the end you're to keep tipping in the game, like you know what I mean. So and, and like as I say, you have to buy the ticket if you want to take the ride, like you know what I mean. And like you could argue the toss that no, they were tip were lucky in 2020 that Kerry were snatched were the, the, the Kerry snatched defeat from the from the jaws of victory against Cork and the Cork. Cork never turned up on, in the final, but Tip lads still had to stand up and do it. Exactly, and, and, you know that that final there was only looked like one winner from five minutes in or whatever. Five minutes in, in. So and like, that's I suppose and that's, that is the that is what Tip football can do. Is you know it's two. And that's a half the yardstick. Later, yeah, and we're still talking the about the you know yeah we're still talking about these games. Uh, John, best of luck for the year ahead. It'd be great to have you back on. I suppose mid championship or that see how things are going. Um, yep. or, or in a, f- a few weeks' time, and to keep on discussing temporary football, so we'll ke- we'll keep a close eye on uh, Tip Minor footballs on the socials and all that this year. But uh, thanks a minute. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me on. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah.